Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Saturday, January 14th, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. A geomagnetic storm is in progress due to enhanced BZ and solar winds smashing the earth. Take a look. Go outside and look up at the big story. Californians urge to stay vigilant as forecasters warn of two new storms. Keep calm. It's atmospheric river boom time. California braces for two more atmospheric rivers. Can you believe it? A country highway on agricultural land here seen flooded by the Salinas River in Salinas, California, and more to come. It will be no fun. People will become complacent, but the ground is saturated. It's extremely, extremely dangerous, said the director of California Governor's Office of Emergency Services. And here we can see the weekend storm first Californians to stay vigilant. Well, and above water. More rainfall will continue into Sunday ahead of a second storm system approaching the coast early Monday morning, the bulletin said. And California is also bracing for a third week of severe winter storms. The Bay Area and parts of central and southern California are under flood watch or evacuation warnings. The deadly rain and winds have caused mass flooding and large sinkholes swallowing roads and cars. At least 19 storm-related deaths have been reported across the state. Governor Gavin Newsom has warned Californians to be hyper-vigilant as storms continue to batter the state. NBC's Scott Cohn joins me now from Spreckles, California. Uh, Scott, what what are the latest conditions there where you are? Well, uh, in a word, Corey, it's miserable. It's raining. The wind has kicked up. That's a problem because it comes on top of two weeks of heavy rains. And so the wind can topple trees uh, that, that are already weakened. Uh, you can see behind me, that's the Salinas River. Well, there's a road, normally a bridge over the Salinas River. The Salinas River, a major waterway in this part of the state that goes about 175 miles from southeast to northwest. Uh, and, and the worry here here is that it's cutting off communities, it's cutting off uh, some, some precious farmland. And so a lot of worries about that, uh, continued flooding, continued erosion here and along the coast. In a state of 40 million people, now some 15 million are under some form of flood advisories. So clearly there will be issues developing over the next 24 to 36 hours. Power outage is already beginning to climb. 26,000 without power for power in California, and this will increase as rising floodwaters force evacuations in Felton Grove and Sequel Village. We just saw a large buildup of logs here. Take a look at this. So this is some of the scenes from earlier today. As some of the swelling rivers and creeks begin to affect bridges and maybe breaking them out. Take a look at here. It's like a mud flood. So just some of the scenes coming out. This is where San Lorenzo River is on Saturday morning. All right, San Lorenzo Valley. It is Saturday, January 14th, about 8.20 in the morning. I'm here at Felton Cover Bridge. On the Cover Bridge right now. Yeah, we could see a lot of flooding happening as well as mudslides. Let's take a look at this. A portion of Cloverdale Road in Pescadero. Pescadero is closed due to a mudslide, which we can see there. Let's retweet that onto our Twitter, where you can check out everything at Oppenheimer Ranch Project, at Diamond the Dave, if you so choose. Please go over there and support us on the tweet box, at Diamond the Dave, Oppenheimer Ranch Project, at Diamond the Dave. We thank you all for supporting us there for breaking news as it develops. Now, I-80 is closed in the Sierras because of hazardous driving conditions in both directions. Take a look at this, complete whiteout. Vehicle spinouts cleared, traffic released on US-50 at Echo Summit, chain control still in effect. Traffic was released on US-50 at Echo Summit just at five, 6 p.m. tonight. But take a look. It's a, it's a whiteout, and we, we do have video of the, those whiteout conditions. So no one, need, no one is driving or needs to be driving on Highway 80 near Donner Summit. That's a period.
and an exclamation point. As 49ers Seahawks playoff game is facing a potent storm, fans advise not to drive. Hello. They're actually advising you not to go to an event. That's amazing. New York City is on track to potentially break a 50-year record of the most consecutive days without snow. And that has to do with the triple dip La Nina. Let's take a look. There might be some snow coming to New York City this month, though. Waves of heavy precipitation continue to batter California. Heavy rain will continue bringing the threat of flooding and mudslides as well as landslides. Hazardous travel due to heavy mountain snow and blowing snow from California to Colorado. Strong winds and dry conditions will produce elevated and to critical fire weather threats across portions of the Southern Plains. It's insane. We have all weather threats coming on the... Here we can see... Uh, the system moving into the West that will be disseminating and gone someday tomorrow afternoon. But that quickly, that system is going to be moving into the Four Corners region and bringing us quite a nightmare that will last through Tuesday as a system moves through the Midwest and the Upper Plains to bring some heavy snow. We'll see some lingering activity in the Northeast as another system winds up here late in the week maybe to bring some more snow into the Northeast. Let's take a look at the snowfall totals here. Sunday, Monday into Tuesday. It's our lose day here in the Four Corners. So more heavy snow coming to the Sierras over the weekend, all the way up through the Pacific Northwest. As a system moves through the Northern Plains, just a few inches, nothing significant until this system here, end of the week, begins to move across Nebraska and Kansas. It's going to bring heavy snow through Iowa, Wisconsin, and potentially Michigan as the system picks up steam. So we're only looking out here now four or five days, and there are your snow totals. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We have an interesting rocker up here, 3.3 in Dedham, Maine. It's insane. Most recent quake kicking off in Turkey in the Fertile Crescent, where we just, Lee and I just did a video on. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Not much going on worldwide. Sam, Sabankaya to 24,000. Following a 28,000 puff, we have two new volcanoes to add to the list. Diang Volcano in Java. Seismic unrest alert status has been raised to level two, as well as Liwotolo. Volcano in the Lesser Sunda Islands of Indonesia. Resumption of activity, first eruption since October of 2022. So things are heating up in the Pacific Ring of Fire. Space weather news is heating up with a geomagnetic storm in progress. KP is at 5. The 30-minute aurora forecast looks spectacular for much of Canada. So get out there. Look up and please record these auroral activities. At the same time, we have a spike in X-ray flux. We do have a solar flare now occurring. Let's see if we can get this up here. In the major, M6 just occurred. This is slightly long duration. This is lasting a little more than an impulsive event. So we're keeping a close eye on this M flare as it may be Earth facing. While the global D layer absorption is showing radio blackout for all of Australia during this event. So a significant event is ongoing as a geomagnetic storm is occurring. It is boom time. Now, Minnesota farmers are accused of falsely selling crops as organic. This has been going on for years. We warned about this months ago, but the case is in. Wolf has been previously charged in federal court with felony wire fraud being named in Friday's superseding indictment. Olson is charged with helping Wolf sell crops falsely described as organic after the organic farming certification was re revoked in 2020. And in fact, they had been selling grains in the organic market for years that were sprayed with pesticides. That's why we implore you to grow your own food. Now, a 290-foot asteroid is on its way to Earth today, according to NASA. And NASA is revealing the astonishing speeds of a mammoth 290-foot asteroid named 2022 YH3. And its closest approach is happening now. 
<laughs> NASA's JPL re released its list of asteroids and near-Earth asteroids. Now, the current 290-foot asteroid 2022 YH3 will be making its closest approach to Earth today, January 14, 2023, at a distance of 7.28 million kilometers, according to the information pro provided by JPL. The building side asteroid building-sized asteroid is moving at a mind-numbing speed of 58,572 kilometers per hour or 16.27 kilometers per second. Notably, the asteroid is not posing any threat to Earth, but if something does hit in the next few hours, we'll know where it came from. Now, while many paleoclimatologists like myself have been blowing the whistle on this Ice Age shift, for many years, it has just come to the peer-reviewed science for the first time ever. New research flips our understanding of ice age frequency. And here's the paper coming out 5th of December. West Antarctic ice volume variability paced by obliquity until 400,000 years ago. Well, it's not that recent. I think the actual shift happened around eight. 100,000 or 900,000 years ago, but a marked shift in the predictive nature of ice ages occurred at 400 kiloyears. So what the paper is revealing, and first let's bring you up to speed. Here is the global surface temperature on Earth for the last 65 million years. This is since the extinction of the dinosaurs. And you can clearly see from the top graph that the temperature on planet Earth has been very warm until now. We are in fact the coldest in the last few million years that Earth has been for a very long time. There is no reason we don't want the Earth to warm. We need the Earth to warm. We are in fact at a critical flexure point where all life could end if the Earth cools any further. So, those are the facts. The climate alarmist warning us that the temperature is going to warm is complete idiocy. All right, so let's bring it back to the last 5 million. Somewhere around 2 million years ago, we entered an ice age. Right around here, the beginning of the Pleistocene. And that's when temperatures rapidly reduced and ice began to build on Earth. And it has been an ice age since then. And so the ice age right here at the flexure point is around 2.9 million years ago. Ice began to stay and build on Earth, and we have been in an ice age ever since. The whole idea of Anthropocene is completely insane. As well as Bill Gates, another insane person, he claims we will overshoot the 1.5 degrees Celsius of global warming and that nuclear can be super safe, and fake meat will eventually be very good. Well, Bill, none of us want your dystopian future. And in fact, if you want to know what's going to reset humanity and save all our asses from the dystopian transhumanist world, well, come check out Decoding Gobegli Tepe with Diamond and Leah, our most recent upload on Magnetic Reversal News where we bring you up to speed on the most recent cosmic catastrophe, science, and we break it down in layman's terms. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. Happy, well, Martin Luther King weekend, whatever that means. And please become a Patreon, support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that's a boom. Grow your own food. Do it now. Do adapt.